Hey there, welcome to another Barry Patch Review. Today we are going to be continuing with part 2 of my review for Star Wars from a certain point of view. So if you have not seen part 1, click the link in the description or in the cards. So I'll begin this part, this part 2 with, with the rating of it. As I have said, I greatly enjoyed this book. So I decided to give this book 5 stars out of 5. Don't do it too often, but it was just a so, it's such a good book. Yes, there were some parts I didn't like, but that's always to be expected, really. Um, uh, just a few other kind of things I wanted to add that I did not have a, in my original audio was that, um, I would not have taken anything away from this book, and so I can, so in that respect, I can't say I would you want to add anything because then it wouldn't be 40 stories celebrating 40 years. But yeah. But there, though, maybe some individual tweaks to individual stories here and there, but that would be it. But now I'll go enjoy the rest of my crop review. It's going to pick up right where I left off in part one. So it may seem a bit arbitrary. But if you're watching these two back to back, you shouldn't have any problem if you're willing to skip this intro. But yes, but it is kind of funny. You you have to read it for yourself. I won't spoil it for you, but it's funny. But yeah, definitely talking about the journey of the world. There's a lot of them. We course, we got we got all, we got the first one. All of them talking about from lot so many points of view. Greedo, pretty much everyone but the main characters. Um, yeah. Some kind of funny ones. Oh yeah, there's well, there's a couple written like as reports. That those were f those were fun. Um, and let me turn to one of them. The one titled the incident report. And um, yeah. Oh yeah, the an incident report by Mallory Oldberg. So this one's from at is from the point of view of um of Admiral Marty, I believe. Yeah, Admiral Marty. And he's it and he's essentially writing a report or a, a PR report kinda of saying a complaint on Darth Vader force choking him. And it's like it is like so funny but it's so it is kind of funny but at the same time not. It is kind of nice. It is interesting to see for sure, and like how, how, sorry, and how M Admiral Martin here is saying, like, I'm not the problem. Vader's the problem. I'm no big nigga. Vader's the one who's shoving his force religion down my throat. It's like, it's quite interesting to see. It's almost like makes him think he is biased against the force because how strong he he says he's not. But it is interesting to see, like. What happens out in those upper levels when there is a disagreement like that? And like, imagine a small little lonely stormtrooper writing an instant report like that. But there was another instant, oh yeah, and right before an instant report there was a point of view from, from, from General Tag, who was in charge of the army. I mentioned that that one specifically mentioned that Krennic chose the empty one, which is kind of nice to know. But yeah, and he was the one who questioned and all that. But he's also the one who really was the most smart. I would love to see him meet Grand Admiral Swan. I think Grand Admiral Swan would still be bad and be smarter than that. But I have a feeling that they would be they would be able to understand each other, kind of like. Wanting the bigger picture, so I think might play a better long game, but it's hard to say. But yeah, yeah and Mon and uh, this book review is between fully operational and, and instant report reviews attack. Not only questions the Death Star, Star as a whole, but he questions. Why the Senate were needed to be dissolved? Like he literally had this, like he wanted the Senate to be dissolved, but he didn't at the same time. It's quite interesting. Maybe so. Yeah, 
This is autism. And you know, there's a point of view from from the um the Biff music one of the Biff musicians that I used to see and about some from the legend storyline. Oh there's one from the the perspective of Aunt Brew. Yeah, not some of these are like the perspective goes right into their deaths. Actually Aunt Brew's actually I think is actually right after right, right after it. Yeah. A little bit before, but it's like all we're doing her death is like when it's taking place. There was an episode from the point of view of Qui uh, episode A story from the point of view of Qui Gon Jin. That was nice to see. Um so yeah, point of view we got Yoda's point of view one is actually very um convoluted to say. <laughs> it goes in and out between past, present, future it's like, wait a second, oh no, wait, it's like, it plays fast and loose with the sense of time. Something that we were alluded to in, from Trigon's perspective in Force Ghost. And then, of course, we also get the story from point, from Yoda's point of view on Dagobah and how he wanted to train Leia, not Luke. I personally think he should have trained both of them. That would have been very useful. And how he, and his only possessions were Trigon's cloak, which he used as a blanket, and... And a bow that Obi Wan apparently made when he was a Padawan, his only possessions. And he sacrificed the bow to protect himself from apparently Imperial Pole droids are searching for him and haven't found him. Good to see the Empire and not giving up. But yeah, it's kind of, and then that's like right after Obi Wan, right before, or after, during when Obi Wan dies. Kind of, and Oda see that feeling that the ball gets destroyed at the same time. And then it goes and Obi Wan comes, he's he's frustrated at Yoda for losing in the ball he made, and but that he saved Qui Gon's cloak. But Qui Gon's cloak might have been a little more necessity. No, you get even though you're living on probably a generally warm, tropical, warm, dry, humid planet, you do some there are probably all cold nights. Probably a cold season too. No, the ball can be used for two. Otherwise, you got to keep your food somewhere. And though so he's shown to have most stuff in his hut in 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 Return of the Jedi, and it's possible he made other stuff too. So it, no, I do kind of question the fact that how he so how he he after, even after like 20 years, he still reaches for his lightsaber even though he doesn't have any regrets. Not having it, kind of like do do we want him to be the put like regular Jedi always go for lightsaber or do we want him to be more force oriented? And on honesty, I don't know, but it's kind of good to see in a way see that. But oh man, if I I could go on and on about this, I'm all I'm already at 20 minutes long for a video, and it's actually you in 20 minutes long for me. It's probably going to be divided in half for you, because cause unlike one video of mine where the review was unable to be uploaded because it was too long, this one I will be splitting into two parts if it is too long, unlike that one which I just recorded a short temporary video for, which is essentially the main video for. But that's not what I'm planning on to do for this one. This one I actually want to record it and have it out. Probably two parts because of its length, but that's regardless. But yeah, there's so many good stories. Stories from the perspective of stormtroopers who were under stormtroopers, stormtroopers under the influence. Um, there was actually one um, from the perspective of an imperial soldier. Soldier who was guarding Princess Leia. I believe that, yeah. It was by, so. Yeah, it was called Change of Heart by Elizabeth Green. And literally, it go. It talks about him. Him. Well, it could be. Her, I think it does refer to him, but. Not quite sure. 
but yeah, I just presume T for some reason. Don't know why. Just to as an opposite. I or to Princess Slayer. That seems like how it was written. But opposite but similar somehow. I I honestly don't know. It's actually pretty broad. It's like he with I'm just gonna use he because I don't didn't see anything indicating this stormtrooper's gender. But yeah, he he guarded, watched, guarded Princess Leia, watch her get tortured by Vader, watch Tarkin question her on the Death Star in the fire control room where he orders the fire the Death Star to be fired the other one. And apparently this stormtrooper could tell that Leia was lying. Lying about it. When she said that the base was on Dantooine. It was like. And he was like. So, like. While not showing her in his head. was like. How could you possibly not know she was lying? And who saw to say. And then. This one I may be reviewing a bit more. But it's just kind of neat. And apparently. The, the stormtrooper thinks that nobody saw it, as I said. And then he's questioning whether or not he should say something. Is it is he being tested? Kind of thing. And where you where he where he questioning what was gained by speaking out. Um, where show your perception about untapped potential as interrogator. Um, also, and things like that, almost like, like questioning and ends up not doing it. And like, and the reason revealed in here why he did not is because if he, he was in Princess Leia's place, he would do the exact same thing that she did. And so essentially, he became a rebel without just by not telling the Empire that Princess Leia was lying. And he probably ended up dying when the Death Star got destroyed. Just think about that. Of those who knew what happened, how, especially among the lower ranks, how many of them just mm, were in the switching side but were unable to get off the Death Star before its destruction. Just makes you think. And like, and there was one that was apparently that starts divided into four sectors, sectors for command, because and you know, all information is given out on an each no basis, and how, how so most people would never know what was going on. Um, it's like that one review that those most imperials on the station may never have knew about it. Almost makes you think that the best strategy would have been to enter commanders to take control of the Death Star and take a bunch of prisoners, disable the Silver Razor, and turn it into a giant floating rubber base. <laughs> Just imagine if they did that. That could be a good Star Wars fan fiction. But that's just, but yes, yeah, so there's so many, so many stories in here. There's a lot of said during the cantina, in my opinion, may be too many, but it's nice to see them. But yeah, it is, it is a good read. I highly recommend that you read it, if you have not done so already, of course. Thank you for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below. What did you think of this book, Star Wars, from a certain point of view? With 40 different authors that I won't even bother naming. <laughs> you can go read it, read that for yourself. Also consider following me on social media. Links are in the description. Consider checking out any of the videos or playlists currently on screen. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. Your donations there can help improve my channel. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. Read books and may the force be with you always.